Okay, example two, graph f of x equals 2x minus 1. And this has been happening here in the last few lessons, and I don't think I made a good enough point of telling you this. So let me tell you this now. Back in algebra 1, we graphed this line, y equals 2x minus 1. I believe it was lesson 51 of the algebra book, if I remember right. And going into lesson 60 or 65, somewhere there, we did the um, slope-intercept method of graph, which we all prefer. Okay? y equals is the same as saying f of x equals, for the most part. There's slight, tiny little... Um, like differences um, mathematically, if, you, if you're like some math purist or whatever, uh, there's a little slight difference between functional notation and y equals, but it's not enough to concern yourself with. So basically these are pretty much interchangeable things. So anytime they're telling you to find f of x or v of t or whatever they're telling you to find, they're asking you to find the y value given the x value. All right, so it's just another way of writing y equals. Um, we're going to be studying more and more functions which have specific properties. Um, f of x is a functional notation, so that's, that's the math purist stuff where we're going to be dealing specifically with functions, but you don't have to know that they're functions to be able to work with them. So I wouldn't concern myself too much with um, just saying that these are interchangeable is good enough for now. Now, um, if you recall back in algebra 1 when we did slope-intercept method of graphing, and again in algebra 2 when we did slope-intercept method of graphing, um, all we have to do, if it says y equals mx plus b, which this already has that structure, there's y, right? There's mx plus b. So I can see from this problem, m is equal to positive 2, b is equal to negative 1. And as far as graphing is concerned, the b is the y-intercept. That's our starting point. On the y-axis, also known as the f of x-axis in this problem, we're going to start at a value of negative 1. That represents a point on the line of the infinity points that are on the line. Okay, all you need is one to use the slope to get another one. The other thing about slope, as I said on the last problem, if we get a whole number, it's great to leave it as a whole number. If I'm actually using it to graph, it's better to look at it in fraction form, so you have a top and a bottom number. The top number is the rise, and the bottom number is the run. Up and right are positive directions, down and left are negative directions. 2 over 1 could be up to right 1. Also, if I take a look at my slope and come down here, if I had negative 2 over negative 1, that also is a positive 2 slope, right? 2 negatives make a positive. That would be down 2 and left 1. So if I go down to left one, that also gives me a point. All three of those points line up on the same line. All you need is two points to graph a line. So you plot your y-intercept, use your slope to get a second point, connect the dots with a nice straight line with arrows on the ends. That's not very good. Start my right spot here. Right about there. That's better. All right. Just like that, we get a straight line. And that's the technique I would always use to graph lines. If you just, um, y to the first equals something x to the first, it's going to be a straight line. Slope-intercept method is the technique to use. I've never found anything more efficient than that.